The Music Modernization Act, the legislation that was passed in 2018, tackles two basic problems. We've talked about the how side of the equation, how the Mechanical Licensing Collective will change the licensing of mechanical rights, and how ASCAP and BMI will be able to negotiate their rates with the digital services that use their music. Now let's turn our attention to the how much part of the question. How much will the music services like Spotify, Google, Apple, Amazon, and Pandora have to pay for the music they use? How much of that will actually be seen by the songwriters and music publishers? And how much will it change the way that music publishers and songwriters run their business? Well, first of all, I wouldn't recommend making a down payment on a boat just based on the Music Modernization Act. In the long term, this bill could be a game changer by establishing a more even playing field between the music users, the digital services that use music on their sites, and the music community, particularly the songwriters and publishers. But that's going to take time, and it's also going to take a continued growth in the streaming market before the impact is really felt. Right now, here are the ways in which the Music Modernization Act is most likely to affect the bottom line for music publishers and songwriters. The creation of the Mechanical Licensing Collective should certainly cut down on the administrative costs for music publishers by eliminating the need to process stacks of notices of intention that pile up in the office, by reducing the man hours necessary to track income and match it up between songs and sound recordings, and by eliminating the need to research and respond to hundreds of music services who want to use the music. One of the major frustrations with the new streaming economy for music publishers has not only been the very low rates paid, but the extremely high costs of trying to administer and collect on the income that's out there. It's one thing to earn a dollar for every 10,000 streams. It's another thing if it takes you six months just to collect that dollar. When the Mechanical Licensing Collective goes into effect in 2021, you, the publisher, will be responsible for uploading your data into the overall collective database. However, after that, the Mechanical Licensing Collective will then take that information, match it up with the correct sound recordings, collect the income, and distribute that money back to the music publishers and songwriters. It will also handle non-payment issues, ownership disputes, and the distribution of unclaimed royalties. Obviously, this particular benefit of the Music Modernization Act is going to be felt much more strongly by large publishers with very active catalogs than by, say, an individual songwriter. If you have five songs up on Spotify, the Mechanical Licensing Collective is probably not going to change your life in any measurable way. On the other hand, if you have 5,000 songs, it could be the difference between your company being profitable or not profitable. Beyond improving the administration process, the Music Modernization Act is also intended to raise the royalty rates. But it doesn't do that by setting a specific number. It hopes to do that by changing the way in which the two sides negotiate with each other. Currently, mechanical royalty rates for digital streaming are set by a group of judges called the Copyright Royalty Board. These are three judges who work for the Copyright Office. They hear arguments from both sides, the music publishers on one side and the digital service providers on the other, and then they decide on what they think will be an appropriate rate for the next five-year period. Traditionally, one of the major factors that the judges were supposed to take into account when considering the proper royalty rate was a concept called disruption. This meant that they were to avoid any kind of rate hike that would disrupt another person's business. Obviously, this has the effect of keeping the royalty rates considerably lower than they would be in a free market situation. For example, the statutory mechanical rate for physical product right now is 9.1 cents. It has been 9.1 cents since 2007. Yes, that's right. During a period in which the entire economic universe has been disrupted not once but several times by everything from the internet to social media to Uber, music users can rest in tranquility, knowing that they are free of the disruption that even an extra penny for songwriters might cause.
under the Music Modernization Act, the new standard that will be applied in these rate negotiations is the idea of a willing buyer, willing seller. Basically, this just means whatever the market will bear. If someone is willing to pay a particular price for a product, then that is reasonably representative of the product's value in the marketplace. Realistically, changing over to a willing buyer, willing seller principle should raise royalty rates considerably, but just how much is actually anyone's guess. In fact, the Copyright Royalty Board already reset rates back in 2018, a few months before the Music Modernization Act was passed. At that time, they raised the royalty rates significantly for on-demand music streaming services like Spotify, Apple, Google, and Amazon. Between 2018 and 2022, the royalty rates should go up as much as 43% for songwriters and music publishers, from 10.5% of a service's revenue to 15.1%. Keep in mind that as these percentages go up, the size of the music streaming market also increases. So to have a better idea of how much this could actually mean in terms of income, it's important to try to visualize what the music streaming market might look like in two or three years. And then in 2023, when the rates are reset again, the new principle of willing buyer, willing seller will apply, which should raise rates further. I know, you're envisioning that new tricked out recording studio you're going to build in your basement based on the increased royalties from the Music Modernization Act. Well, hang on a second. There's one more twist to the story. Apparently, some of the buyers, Spotify, Amazon, Google, and Pandora, are not as willing as we had hoped. When those royalty rates that I mentioned, the ones that gave you the 40% raise, were announced back in 2018, there was much rejoicing among the music publishing community. Finally, it seemed we had reached a peace treaty and a long war with the digital services, particularly Spotify, and come out with what we thought was a reasonably favorable result. There would be no more angry anti-Spotify screeds from Taylor Swift and Tom York. Now we would all live together in harmony and work together towards the future. That was until the appeal. In March of 2018, Spotify, Google, Amazon, and Pandora, not Apple, announced that they were planning to appeal the Copyright Royalty Board decision about those rates, the ones that gave you the 40% raise. This is the first time that a decision by the Copyright Royalty Board has ever been appealed. And as you can imagine, it basically had the effect of Spotify firing a missile into the middle of the ASCAP Expo. David Israelite, last seen championing the fact that the tech industry and the music industry had finally learned to work together, announced that any hope of better relations between the music community and Spotify had been snuffed out. Also possibly snuffed out is that dream of the recording studio in the basement. It's anyone's guess what the appeals court will rule in relation to the copyright royalty board decision, but it's quite possible that that 43% raise you were planning on will not materialize. Which leaves us with the performing rights, which is the other income that's addressed by the Music Modernization Act. The new rules will be that the judges who decide the royalty rates for ASCAP and BMI will work on a rotational basis. So now there's only a percentage chance of a judge with a grudge against songwriters ruining your studio renovation plans. At the same time, ASCAP and BMI will be allowed to introduce as evidence the amount of money being paid for sound recordings as opposed to the composition, which should help our case somewhat. But honestly, these are small changes. ASCAP and BMI remain subject to the consent decrees, which are going to hold royalty rates considerably under their free market value for the foreseeable future. Like most legislation that gets passed in a democratic society, the Music Modernization Act does a little bit of good. It moves things incrementally forward, and it leaves a lot in the realm of TBD to be determined. When it comes to how much the Music Modernization Act will change things for music publishers and songwriters, the answer lies somewhere on a scale between a little, not enough, and better than nothing. We'll see where it finally winds up. Personally, my biggest concern about the Music Modernization Act is that there's this thing that always happens. 
and it's called change. After all, someone thought they were pretty modern when they imposed the consent decrees back in 1941. My fear is that one day, probably in 2022, because yes, I'm that skeptical, the royalty rates will finally be resolved with the Copyright Royalty Board, the Mechanical Licensing Collective will be ready to go online with its new blockchain-driven technology, and that night I'll be taking the bus home and I'll hear some 12-year-old kid say to his older sister, Oh yeah, music streaming. I remember when you and your friends were so into that. We don't really listen to music like that anymore. And then the whole thing will begin again. Now you could find that idea depressing or frustrating and I wouldn't blame you. I myself find it oddly reassuring because it means that those of us who have taken the time to learn a little something about music publishing will always be needed and will always have our little corner somewhere in the music universe between the CRB and the MLC and the NMPA. Most songwriters don't really want to think about this stuff for more than a few minutes a day. So those songwriters who learn about music publishing will always have friends and someone who needs the knowledge they bring. That's why I want to end today by encouraging all of you to learn as much as you can about the fundamentals of music publishing. One great way to do that is by checking out my course, Music Publishing 101 at Berkeley Online. This 12-week course takes you through every step of becoming an effective music publisher for yourself if you're a songwriter or for others. The music business will always change. Progress does not end with the Music Modernization Act. But as the business grows increasingly complex, it's important to have a very strong grasp of the fundamentals of music publishing so that you can understand how things are changing and how it will affect you and your clients. Thank you for watching this discussion of the Music Modernization Act. Be sure to check out my course, Music Publishing 101 at Berkeley Online, and I'll look forward to seeing you out there in the brave new modern world of music publishing.